All right, Shalom, Shalom. Call Allah, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakwadash. All right. This is the brother Zachariah coming back to you with another lesson, uh, sit down lesson. All right. On this, uh, it's a decent Saturday. You know, uh, I said I'll get a couple lessons, uh, sit down lessons in before I go out on the highways and byways. All right. And uh, Salakia to anybody, if you, in case you were wondering, no, I, I haven't been as active on um, some of the social media platforms. Like, you know, I have been posting, but not as much as I really, you know, I, I could go hard in the paint. And uh, then I've been trying, you know, get to where I could get a few videos or lessons out, you know, during uh, the week. But uh, my data is very low, so I've been really kind of like stretching it. And I've been working overtime on my job because like, you know, with you know you know just making sure i stay you know caught up on my bills uh groceries you know because food is high so and you know i eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and things like that you know a lot of the stuff man spoils quick you know so i shop weekly and i'm spending a lot but uh not even just that but like i've been buying some things for the uh for, for the gospel as well you know uh you know, brothers use tripods. I didn't even have a tripod. So, you know, that was one of the things I wanted to get, but I wanted a decent one. I don't want one of those cheap ones because if, if I'm out and it's a windy day, you know, I live in the Ohio Valley, you know, so I gotta be mindful of those things. But I wanted one that's really, that could withstand, you know, the wind. So, you know, things like that. So I worked some overtime. So I worked the long hours this week and it really put a draining on my body because, you know, I'm not a young, I'm not a young, young guy, you know, uh, and, um, you know, I've been there, done that. I've worked all, all that before. But when I come into this truth, I just keep it very simple. I do my 40 and that's it, you know. Uh, and but uh, but like I said, you know, with things going up and stuff like that, I wanted to just work a little extra just to make sure I have a, enough for all that. Plus, you know, like I said, buying things, you know, I want to get a couple new garments as well, you know, going out. So, you know, just things like that, you know, and I just pray, you know, how it gave, you know, gave me a strength. Which, you know, I endured and, and got through it. But, you know, I'm coming around a town where my data is low. And um, I have to stretch it until about Tuesday or Wednesday is when my, I think, uh, my phone bill is due. You know, so, uh, you know, I had to watch my data. And, and this devil, man, I think he's doing something to where he's draining my data. All right. But uh, enough rambling. Now, we're going to go ahead and get into the lesson. But first and foremost, I want to give all honor, all glory, all praise unto Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders of the nation of Israel. Shalom to you brothers out there that are laboring, enduring the elements, making your body a living sacrifice, trying to seal the elect, making your calling and election assured. All right, seeking out your own salvation. To you uh, sisters out there that are learning, listening, applying, being obedient to your husbands, okay? Shalom, Shalom. All right. So, uh, um, you know, we're going to talk about Amalek for a little bit. And in case you don't know who uh, Amalek is, it's the people that are in uh, Holy Land today. All right. And, you know, the uh, scriptures actually tells you that, um, you know, when um, Yahweh Shai, you know, puts the uh, Israelites back into the Holy Land, which, see, he hasn't done that yet. They, they actually just took it upon themselves to go over in there and, and, and take that land. All right. But uh, so we know that these, they're not the people because they're doing things uh, at, uh, adverse to, to what the scriptures are saying. The, the complete opposite. All right. So, uh, but it, the scriptures tell you that uh, when Yahweh Shah put the uh, the uh, Israelites back in the land, there will be peace. It'll be peace in the land. It'll be peace in the world, actually. And you don't see that. You don't see that at all. But people believe that those are the people. You know, you can't say anything about them. But uh, See, we go, we use their biblical name, and that's why a lot of that, it don't trigger anything, because you're not saying the certain word, you know, what they call themselves today. You know, but that, but, uh, if you know anything about Amalek, Amalek is the grandson of Esau, okay? So they're Amalekites, all right? We know who they are. And, uh, but there's a strong delusion on those people. So, you know, maybe the, uh, just your, your average uh, small hatter don't know what don't know what's going on. They might really believe they're they're the people, you know, and so that's something to keep in mind. You know, they're under that strong delusion. But the elite, the the elites of them, the 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 ones that are uh, the higher ups, they're in the know. They know who they are, you know. They're the ones. They purposely, you know, 
change their names because you know it tells you that uh, Esau would be a, a fugitive and vagabond. You know, going back to Cain, you know, with him being Cain in the re regeneration. But uh, you know, there's a lot going on over there in that land, and that's because those people are not the people. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump into this article here. It says, Israel is in turmoil after judicial uh, overhaul vote. What now? It says, the serious, this is a serious threat. This has never happened before, you know, which uh, Yahweh is beginning to move on those people. And we're going into a civil war now. Form, former Prime Minister uh, Ehud uh, Omert uh, said, okay? And it says, mass protests in in Israel over Prime Minister's plan to weaken the Supreme Court. You know, the guy that's in there now. All right. Since Israel faces extraordinary turmoil in a de uh, democratic uh, crisis as opposition leaders and protesters step up their campaign against Prime Minister Benjamin uh, Netanyahu, if I'm pronouncing his name right, ju judicial overhaul plan. Okay. Uh, Netanyahu and his coalition allies on the religious and political right won a key victory Monday by voting through the first part of the overhaul, removing the right of judges on the Supreme Court to overrule cabinet ministers' decisions for being unreasonable. So they're, they're protesting and stuff, and as you can see in this picture here, which I'm not going to play the clip, you know, but, you know, they're protesting and, and, and everything. And, you know, the scriptures uh, goes into a lot of these things that, that uh, are happening. You know, worldwide, because this is not just with them. This is happening worldwide in various countries. Look at the stuff going on in Africa, which that's going to be a lesson uh, in its in itself, uh, you know. But this is Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 16. It says, For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and their course uh, of their actions shall stand in their power. And this is what's going on, you see, uh, happening with them over there in the Holy Land, you know. And then uh, you have this as well, okay? Uh, Second Ezra chapter nine, but I'm gonna start at verse three and I'm gonna read down to four. And it says, therefore shall, uh, or, or, or therefore when there shall be seen earthquakes, which we see a lot of earthquakes, and uproars of the people in the world. See, that's the point I was getting to, okay? And it says, then shalt thou uh, well understand that the Most High spake of these things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. So Yahweh said these things would happen. He said this from the beginning, you know, because this is his movie. All this is playing out the way that he said it would. OK, so, you know, basically these things are manifesting. OK. Okay, so as you see those clips with, uh, you know, they over there protesting and uh, Yahweh, <laughs> I said something because I had posted this a while back on Instagram, you know, uh, the guy getting hit with the water cannon. I was like, man, that's spiritual. But I said, he's he's uh, he's cooling them off, <laughs> you know, because we've been dealing with these heat waves and stuff, too. But, uh, you know, so this is Amalek against Amalek. OK, because Amalek, uh, you know, they're they're uh, they're at odds with each other over there. Okay, and this is uh, Isaiah uh, 19 in verse 2. Okay, and it says, And I will set the Egyptian against the Egyptians. And you know, someone might go or argue, Oh, well, this is talking about the uh, actual Egyptians. Yeah, it's, talk it, it's talking about the uh, actual Egyptians, but you can uh, apply this to modern day because uh, Babylon is ran by who? The Amalekites. Okay, you know, they funded the slave trade. They they pretty much own this. They own this land now, um, and this place is also known as uh, modern. Um, it's, or not modern, but uh, spiritual. Uh, this is spiritual Sodom and Egypt. Okay, 
and you saw in the clips they had the uh, they had the rainbow flags uh, while they were out there protesting. So all this is, is really those are clues. Those are things that are showing you, man, that the scriptures is on point. You know, in a spiritual Sodom in Egypt. Okay. So again, Isaiah 19 and 2 says, and I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians because there are the spiritual Egyptians. You know, because they got the Israelites in captivity till this day. All right. And they shall fight against, uh, they shall fight everyone against his brother and, and everyone against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. Okay. So, and, but that's what you're seeing over there. So they're at odds with each other, you know, and then um, you got the, uh, the Israelis are beefing with the Palestinians, you know. So it's nothing but war, man, which, you know, you go into Matthew. Uh, the 24th chapter it goes into how you're gonna see uh, you're gonna hear of wars and rumors of wars so you will hear of actual wars but then you're gonna hear of rumor of wars you know but they're they're definitely at, at war with uh, the Palestinians okay but they're at war with us Israelites and they're at war with the Most High okay but he's at war with them all right and this is uh, Exodus 17 and 16 and it says for he said because the Lord has sworn uh hold on Salakia for that, all right? Exodus 17, 16, it says, For he said, because the Lord, this is talking about Yahweh, has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. So Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shah, man, is at war with Amalek, okay? You know, there was the passage where uh, he sent Saul to wipe out the uh, Amalekites, and he didn't. He let some of them live, and they, and they got away, you know? You know, which that's, a, that's another story there. You know, Saul did a lot of many offenses, you know. You know, he was consulting with witches and all that stuff. But like I said, that's another story, you know. I'm trying to stay on topic. But, you know, sometimes you get to talk about somebody, you think about uh, all kinds of other things, okay? So, you know, uh, the scriptures tell you also that uh, a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. You know, this is Zechariah 9 and 6. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines, okay? So, the... Uh, you know, Yahweh, uh, he said these things, man, and then if you're new in this, and maybe you're not too familiar, like you're not familiar, you just know Israel and Jerusalem, but you don't know maybe the other land masses there. You know, Ashdod is a part of Israel, okay? So that's why I pulled this up, Ashdod, and it's a city in Israel, all right? And down here it says, Ashdod is the sixth largest city in Israel, located in the country's southern district. It lies on the Mediterranean coast, 32 kilometers south of Tel Aviv, all right, and 20 kilometers north of Ashkelon, all right. So that's this is uh, when it said that it's talking about a bastard. You know, these are these people are not the uh, they're not the people, they're not the uh, they're not the Israelites, all right. And and then you're seeing all this uh, turmoil and, and, and chaos and stuff happening over there. And it's all biblical prophecy that it would happen, you know, because uh, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is at war with these people and they're going to be removed out of the land and we're going to be put back in that land. OK. So that's all Bible prophecy and that's what we look forward to. You know, you have a lot of Israelites who will go over there, fly over there and start trying to live in the land. They, they know that they're Israel, so they go over there and they're trying to dwell. And you can't dwell in that land amongst those people. You know, they had, uh, uh, they had video clips where like certain, like a rap, you know, uh, rabbis, uh, there was one where a rabbi spit on a, uh, on a Eve, you know, she was over there and she got spit on by some so-called rabbi, you know. I, I believe it was a rabbi. It's also it's very ironic because you look at the small headers and they and when people talk about them, they supposedly, they mostly got money, they own properties and all this stuff. But you know, the Bible says that the uh, Israelites will be, uh, will be low, they'll be meek, you know, they, they, they'll be the poor, you know? Most people ain't poor, so something ain't adding up, you know? And, and they don't also, they don't believe in, um, they don't believe in the, uh, 
Messiah like that. They actually in their book Talmud, they have it uh, where they they believe uh, that he's uh, in hell, buried uh, upside down in, in semen and feces. You know, not to gross anyone out, but that's true. You know, these devils, man, these people are, are wicked, and, and there's a lot of other wickedness in that book, that Talmud book. You know, when you do your studies and, and your research on them in, in, in the books, you know, it's very, they're very wicked individuals. All right. And they are not the people, you know. All right. Uh, this is another article here. It's an old article, but I just wanted to show you like these people, man. And, and they're not the people because, you know, we know that the Yahweh Bashim Shah is not for, uh, you know, sodomites and all that. We, you know, just take uh, what he did over there in, um, in Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay. And this is an old article. It was published date is 2018, but it says update, updated date 2021. You know, because this is something that's constantly brought brought back out. But it says quarter of a million march in largest ever gay parade, gay pride parade in the Middle East. All right. We know that a lot of those countries don't don't tolerate this type of stuff, but they do. And see, look at the flags and everything. All right. And it says this year's parade marks the 20th anniversary of Tel Aviv's first pride parade and pay tribute to the pioneering activists who play a key role in promoting the uh, LGBT uh, or LGBT uh, rights. You know, they didn't have to guess the Q on there as of yet. <laughs> rights and visibly in Israel. All right. That's a, that's crazy. This is a quarter of a million people, man. And it says, uh, hold on, a quarter of a million people around the world gathered in Tel Aviv today. And this was uh, Friday, 28th March. This is 2018 to march in the largest ever parade in the Middle East. This year's parade marked 20 years to the city's first pride parade and paid tribute to the pioneering activists who played key role in promoting LGBT. Um, oh, I, just, I read all that. All right. And it says, uh, voted the world's best gay city by GayCities.com. Wow, the most gay-friendly city in the world by Wild Travel. Tel Aviv's Pride Parade is widely recognized as one of the world's leading LGBT events, attracting thousands of visitors from around the globe. TV hosts uh, and TV superstar Andy Cohen was selected to act at this year's International Pride Ambassador. The 2018 parade also featured Eurovision's winner Netta, who took. Uh, yeah, I don't want to read the rest of that. I'm already vexed just reading this mess. <laughs> but this another offense of these people, man. And this is why Yahweh Bashim Shah is at war with them, man. You know, and he's gonna uh, he's going to uh, wipe these people out, man. You know, he's gonna be begin to uh, visit the world that he's made, man. This is why, and I was reading this earlier, but uh, in Second Ezra, it's, uh, chapter nine. But uh, you know, uh, I also wanted to uh, read to you um, verses one and two. You know, I read three and four earlier because it was going into what I was saying. You know, that in the key, what the key parts being the uproars of the people in the world, but. Uh, this is 2nd Ezra chapter 9. I'm going to start at verse 1. I'm going to read down to 2. It says, He answered me uh, then uh, and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest uh, see part of the signs pass, which I have told thee, then shalt thou understand that is the very same time where the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. And he is visiting this world right now by way of all the things that he said, you know, like the upwards of the people, the wars, you know, the war with Amalek and everything. You know, uh, this is why you're seeing the protests and all that, the division. The, the you know, uh, Yahweh Shah says that he uh, is not coming to bring peace on the earth, but a sword, you know. And it also says that... Uh, you know he's bringing a uh, division you know so and um so as he he draws closer and closer to the uh to the earth man you're gonna see more and more of it you know in, in these times you know you're gonna see these nations uh at, at odds with each other and fighting each other and uh you know and you're gonna see the collapse of many of these uh these kingdoms you know because a lot of them had a hand in uh, um in the downfall of us you know so this is judgment on them you know
And I'm going to uh, bring out one more scripture and then I'll end it on this. Like I said, it was my, not the, meant to be long or anything. Just, uh, just a quick, quick lesson. All right. So uh, I'm going to get one more scripture. Give me one second. Yeah, it wasn't meant to be long. Just this uh, going into the Holy Land and just showing you the stuff that's going on over there right now. And... Uh, and how those people, you know, how they move. And this is one of my favorite scriptures too. I like this. Okay. And this is Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 7. And it says, And the Lord, this is talking about Yahweh, Lord, uh, and the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thy enemies, which they are our enemies as well, and on them that hate thee, which persecute thee. Okay. When you go into the book of Psalms, um, I want to say is it the 82nd chapter i believe it's the 82nd chapter and it goes into like how the uh, nations came together to cut us off from being a nation uh um you know when you go into the list of all of those nations you see amalek on there okay so uh they are they are our enemies okay so make no mistake. So all these curses, the curses that were on us, because we were at odds with each other at one point, you know, the Israelites, this is why this whole truth was supposed to be doing now is bringing us back together and closing up the breaches. You know, we're coming back together as a nation. And while we're, we're coming back together as a nation, all these other nations that, that have uh, came up against us, they're all falling apart. OK, so again. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thy enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecute thee. All right. So this is what you're seeing in these last days, you know, the fall of our enemies. All right. So Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all honor, all glory, all praise unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders of the nation of Israel. And shalom to you brothers and sisters out there. To the next one. Shalom.